This is a very common question and it's a good one because it's not that obvious. What is a coletilla exactly? And what is the difference between a coletilla and a letra? Here are seven differences. Hi, this is Guillermo Guillem for Flamenco Maps. Welcome to my channel. Whether you sing flamenco, you dance, you play guitar, you play palmas, you play cajon, or you just want to understand how it works, today we'll see how we can really distinguish a letra from a coletilla. Most of the time, a coletilla is sung right after the main letra. So if we don't know the cante very well, it sounds like one single block of cante, one long letra maybe, but it's not. These are two different things. And why is it so important to know? Because whether we are in a letra or in a coletilla, different things can happen. The character is different, the way of singing is different, the processing is different. We don't dance and we don't play the guitar, the palmas or the cajon the same way in a letra or in a coletilla. So if we really want to be connected to what the singer is doing, we better know and understand what he or she is doing, right? In Spanish, a coletilla is a short text added at the end of another text or a speech, for example. So this is the main idea. It is a small element that follows the big element, the main element. This idea is included in the word itself because a cola is a tail. And we have kind of a double diminutive in Spanish because colita would be a short tail and coleta is, for example, when you have long hair and you tie it up. And here we have coletilla, so it's a double diminutive, so it's like a very short, short tail. So a coletilla in a cante is a short letra or a secondary letra that comes after the main letra. We got that. As with letras, there are thousands of different coletillas, but there are still some important things to know, things that fundamentally differentiate a coletilla from a letra and an estribillo. And the estribillo topic is a very interesting one too, but we'll talk about that in another video. We don't find coletillas in every palo. We don't have uh, coletilla por seguiria, or we don't have coletillas por malagueña, for example. So the main palos where we can find coletillas are the buleria and the cantinias, the most famous of which are the alegrias. In cantinias, the coletillas are also sometimes called juguetillos. Juguetillo, it's interesting because it's also kind of a double diminutive because juego is a game, juguete is a toy, and juguetillo is a small toy. And we also find coletillas por tango, for example, but it's not that common. To explain the characteristics of a coletilla, it's much easier to put it in parallel with a letra. So let's see seven major differences between a letra and a coletilla. And for this, we'll listen to a specific example of Alegría de Cádiz with Pericón de Cádiz. Quiero. Con los ojitos seña, compañera de mi alma. Ande con los ojos señal que en alguna ocasión los ojos sirven de lengua. Vente conmigo, chiquilla, ay, vente conmigo. Y a tu madre le dice que soy tu primo. This is the main letra with its processing that we talked about in another video. And the second part is the coletilla. First big difference, what I call the standalone. A letra is standalone, it's independent, it can exist without a coletilla. Even if por alegría the coletilla is expected and statistically we'll have coletillas almost all the time after a letra, it's not an obligation. There are cases where there is no coletilla. As we said, usually a coletilla comes after a letra, but Sometimes the coletilla comes detached from the letra. There is one or more compasses in between and it can make it confusing for us. I explain this in this video. 
And in very, very specific context, we can have independent coletillas without a letra before them. This is the case in the Bulerías Festera, when we can have only coletillas and more coletillas. And another case is La Castellana in a baile por alegría, and we'll need to talk about that later. Second big difference, the type of written letra or the type of poem we use for letras and for coletillas. They are not same. In Alegría, the standard format of the written letra that we use is the cuarteta octosyllaba, four lines, eight syllables. This coletilla is using a different uh, written letra. It's a type of seguidilla letra with four lines, but the syllables are eight, five, eight, and five. There are many more types of written poems that we use for the coletillas, but the main thing is that they are different from the one we use for the letras. Now what I call the processing of the letra, and there is a full video talking about this concept of processing. In Alegría there is a very specific processing of a letra to go from the written letra to the sung letra, with a specific system of repetitions. You can sing a coletilla just straight, okay, without any repetition, and it's okay. You couldn't do this for a letra, because a minimum sung letra, the alegría, needs to be processed in an alegría way. But the coletilla doesn't. You can repeat a coletilla, but the processing rules of the letra don't apply for the coletilla. One more thing is the flow. In a standard way of singing a letra de alegría, because there are other ways, but in a normal standard way, one tercio, one sung line of cante is one compass. It covers one compass, one cycle of 12 beats. But the cante flow rate in a coletilla is higher because we cover one compass with two lines. It also explains why a coletilla is shorter than a letra. Usually, a letra is longer than a coletilla. The minimum processing of a letra de alegría, it means the minimum standard repetition that makes it a letra de alegría, is five compasses. You can't have less than five compasses for a letra de alegría. And the maximum extension with the full possible processing with all the repetitions and the respiro can be up to eight or even more compasses. And the minimum extension of a coletilla is two compasses, and the maximum extension in case of a double coletilla or a long coletilla, these are two different things, double or long, is four compasses. So you see the coletilla is shorter. Now let's talk about the starting point of the cante. The normal standard way of uh, cuadrar una letra, of putting a letra a compass nowadays is starting after 12. There is no specific precise point like beat we need to start here, okay? It's much more flexible than that. But usually it's after the 12. Siete, ocho, nueve, diez, un, dos, nanino. When we'll talk more in details about the Cante por Alegría, we'll see that old singers, they were much more free than that and they could start whenever they wanted. But now it's much more square. On the other hand, the coletillas start usually right after 10. And they start after 10 because they aim for the 12, okay? They want to land on 12. The first downbeat, the first accent they will meet is 12. Siete, ocho, nueve, And this way of starting the melody before a downbeat, it's called an anacrusis or a pickup in music, and it is so important, we need to talk about that in other videos too. In this case, we consider the 12 as the first downbeat, the first accent we we'll meet, and the melody aims for this 12. And now the melodies. For each style of letra, there is a specific melody. And por alegría, there are six or seven main styles. It means six or seven different melodies for letras. Same for the coletillas. For each specific style of coletilla, there is a specific melody de coletilla, which is not the same as a melody de letra. The letras and the coletillas have different melodies. As simple as that.
So the best way to know them is to know how to sing them. But actually, I'm sure you already know at least one. The famous Tiriti Tram, it's a melody of a coletilla, but without words. And same as what we said just before, the Tiriti Tram starts after 10 and aims for the 12 with the anacrusis, with the pickup. Siete, ocho, nueve, diez, tiriti. We've seen the major differences between a letra and a coletilla de alegría. Another time we'll explain more in detail what happens with the compass during the coletilla, because there is a change between the letra and the coletilla, and we can express this change with the guitar, with the palmas and dancing. But again, it's all about statistics, okay? Maybe this works mm, most of the time, but you'll always, always find exceptions because Flamenco is about exceptions. So these are global rules that can help you to better understand what you are listening to and what you are doing. But be aware that anything can happen. I hope it could help. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment, tell me what you want me to talk about in this video. And don't forget to go and visit flamencomaps.com where I explain my classes, my courses, my way of teaching flamenco. And there is a little gift waiting there for you. So I see you there. Till then, don't forget, learn flamenco, make it fun, make it different, make it your own. Thank you.